At the same time, the building I now live in was completed. I'm a 30% shared owner in a building developed by Cress Nicholson and now owned and run by Sovereign Housing. The building is missing fire breaks, has combustible insulation and has been deemed a medium to high risk to safety. Many of my neighbours who are here today are also low percentage shared owners. When I bought my flat, I scraped together £5,000 with a deposit and I had not a penny to spare. My parents bought me a mattress and when I was next paid, I bought some furniture on Gumtree. I didn't mind spending all my savings because it was cheaper than renting and I was just so happy to have my own place. It felt like a sanctuary in Bristol. My grandparents travelled six hours on a coach trip to see my new place and my nana, having never been in a flat before, said, well, it'll do for now. She was right. My one bed flat was meant to be a short term step. There are now two of us and two guitars. We want to move somewhere bigger with a garden and I cannot sell the flat. Our building is full of ordinary people. Parents with children at nursery, primary school, secondary school, single people, couples who want to have children. We work at charities, restaurants, universities. Some of us have just started our first jobs. Some are retired or hoping to retire soon. We all have hopes and plans for the future. Speaking with my neighbors about the problem, it's heartbreaking to see the fear and despair on their faces. Every day I worry for all of us as the mental and physical toll becomes greater. I have been living with the stress of the external wall survey and now an unsafe building for 10 months. My emails to Sovereign go mostly unanswered, calls are met with aggression, indifference or ignorance. What started as shock and frustration has been eating away at me and I didn't realise just what an impact it was having until I started crying all the time. Call from my manager? Cry. Run out of coffee? Cry. Boyfriend sends me flowers to cheer me up? Cry. My emotions are very close to the surface and most days I wake up thinking, I'm okay today, only for something to upset me and spending the next few hours crying. I can't focus on anything and I've stopped making plans with friends. I've been in a particularly dark place lately and nothing seems to help. The stress has become physical. With the tightness in my chest, my jaw is clenched, I'm jumpy all the time. I'm exhausted but struggle to sleep, and when I do, I wake up in the night crying. Last week on a morning walk, it was all too much. As I walked along the harbour, I could feel the weight crushing my chest and I couldn't breathe. I had to stop and hold myself up on the railings as the panic overwhelmed me. I have all the tools to help, but it doesn't go away. How can you get better when your home, which is meant to be safe, is the cause of the problem? Sovereign Housing are insisting that if we don't get funding from the Building Safety Fund and Cress Nicholson won't pay, leaseholders will put 100% of the cost regardless of our share. I am facing 100% of the cost of works to Sovereign's building at around £60,000 per flat. For me and many of my neighbours, this is more than our share in the flat is worth. My MP is very supportive, but I keep seeing stop responses from other MPs saying that the current bill holds the right people to account. This is simply untrue, and we sadly cannot rely on the likes of Cress Nicholson and Sovereign Housing to do the right thing. This year has been dominated by frustration, fear and uncertainty, and I have little control over my own life. We need polluter pays so these costs land at the door of those responsible, not mine, yours and other innocent leaseholders. We simply cannot pay. I just want my future back. Thank you. I'm now going to hand over to Tom.